What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Josh, one of your Linode developer advocates. And today I want to show you guys a terminal utility that replaces the find command called FD. And if you are familiar with the Linux operating system, I'm sure you have used the find command before. Well, FD is part of a suite of utilities called modern Unix which gives you modern replacements for commands like find, cat, grep, and ls. And if you research a lot of those older commands, most were created somewhere around 30 years ago. So basically, these modern versions of these utilities are aimed at providing more speed by taking advantage of modern hardware, as well as a little bit of modern aesthetics without losing the original functionality of the commands. So sit back, relax, and let's get started on showing you guys the FD command. So I'm at the GitHub page for the FD utility. And I'll be sure to put the link down in the description of the video so you guys can kind of follow along. But as you can see on the right hand side, there is an about and it simply says a simple, fast and user friendly alternative to find, which is the original utility. But this is the location where you need to go in order to get the utility installed. And if we scroll down to the readme.md, it breaks down a little more about the command, but it also has quick links in case you need assistance. For instance, there's the how to use, a location to get installation information, as well as troubleshooting the actual command once you get it installed. And then a little bit down, it covers the features. And I won't read these features. You can check them out for yourself. But this command does have great features that make this option or alternative a benefit while working within the command line. And one thing I wanted to point out is that this utility is actually written in the Rust programming language. It says about 94.8%, which we all know Rust has been recently added to the Linux kernel as far as support goes. Now let's hop over to the terminal so we can go through the installation as well as some examples on how to use the command. Okay, cool. So I'm on my Ubuntu system. Uh, this is Ubuntu 20.04. And let's go down and open up the terminal so we can install the FD command. Now let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see my screen. Uh, and let's make it full screen so you guys can actually see everything. Now the FD command by default is within the Ubuntu's repository. So all we have to do is use the apt command to actually install it. So the first thing you want to do is update the system. That way it can refresh the repository list. So all we have to do is type sudo apt updates. And like I said, this will refresh the repositories. So let's press enter. Now go through and do a refresh of all the repositories on the system. So let's clear right fast and install FD. And simply all you have to do is type sudo apt install. And the package name is FD dash find. And that's the actual command. So let's press enter. That'll install it for us. You'll see it won't, it won't take too long to actually install it. And you can do this on any Ubuntu and Debian based distribution as long as it's 19.04 and above. Now that we have it installed, let me go down and clear right fast again. But I wanted to show you guys where the binary is located. Because on Ubuntu systems, there is a package called FD. So this is why the package name is FD find. And so it's the same thing with the actual package name or the command itself to run it on the system. So if we run which and then FD find and press enter and that'll show us the binary for the FD find command. Now that's a little inconvenient 
because all of your commands will have to be FD fine when, whenever you want to use the FD command. So there's a workaround for this by linking FD fine to the binary for FD, which I'll go on and type in right fast. And basically all you have to do is type in LN, which is basically a link dash S and then dollar sign. And we get to throw this in parentheses, which is the which command and then find F I N D and then close the parentheses and let's do the tilde and four slash dot local four slash bin four slash F D and press enter. And from what it looks like, we have to add that bin directory. That's why it's failing. So let's uh, do a make DIR and then go into that local directory and then just create a folder called bin press enter and now we should be able to run that same command and that will create the link for us now that that's link we need to reload our profile basically and the command to do that is simply dot and then tilde for the home directory for slash dot profile it's a profile file in there and basically this will reload our bash profile without having to log out and log back in. So let's press enter and we should be good to go. So the first command or the first way I want to show you guys the FD command is simply FD and then dash H. And this is for the help. So whenever you're learning a new command, you want to look at the help because it gives you a lot of the a lot of information about the command the options and the different things you can actually do with the command. So as you can see, the current version that's installed or within the Ubuntu repositories is 7.4.0. And here is the usage. So that shows you how to actually use it. And then the flags as well as the options for it. So let's go on and clear the screen. And I have a directory that I want to use for the demonstration within this video. So let's go to that directory. It's under my documents directory. And then there's a folder called workshop. So let's go up in there. And this is where I'll do all my searches. And the most simplest and easiest way of actually using the FD command is by using a search pattern or what I sometimes call a string because that I used to be a programmer at a certain point. And all you have to do is type FD for fine and then whatever you're looking for. For instance, I want to search for network and by default, fine will search within the current working directory. So as you know, right now we're in the workshops directory. So it'll search recursively within that directory for any file or folder with the name of network. So let's press enter and see it work. And as you can see, it pulls up a lot of files. There's a lot of information in here dealing with network. And it doesn't matter where it is within the actual file name, it will pull it in. Uh, it even shows you the directories that have network in it and as well as the files that are within that directory. So that is the simplest way of actually using the FD command. Now, as I stated, it searches within the current working directory. Now, let's say you don't want to move from this directory, but you want to search within another directory. There is a way to actually do that by typing out the full path. So on all Linux systems, there is a password file and I want to search for it. I know it's under the ETC directory. So I'll run the FD command and actually let's clear right fast and then let's run FD and then password and it's actually pass WD. That's what I'm going to look for that pass WD file, which has system login information in it. Um, so let's press uh, four slash and let's look under the ETC directory, press enter, boom. And as you can see, it pulls anything in there that has pass WD as the name. And it, it also doesn't care what's before pass WD or after pass WD. It will bring it in, you know, with this dash right here. So it'll bring it in, search it, find it and display it for you. And like I said, it's recursive. And as you can see, I'm still in that workshop directory. 
but since I specified the directory I wanted it to search in, it searched under that directory for us, as you can see right there under etc. Now, another cool way of actually searching for files is by searching for a file extension. Now with FD, there is an option for that as well. So if we type FD, and one cool thing about this command, it uses options that make sense. So if you're looking for extension, what's the first letter of extension? E, so that is the option. So dash E, and we're looking for an extension. And I know within this directory, there are a lot of YAML files, which are files used for Ansible, as well as other applications. But let's press enter and see what we can find within this workshop directory. As you can see, it's a lot of files. They, <laughs> and this is an Ansible folder that I downloaded from GitHub with a whole bunch of examples of how to use Ansible. That's why I knew it had a whole bunch of YAML files in it. But as you can see, it, find, it goes through and find every YAML file within this directory that we're looking at. And we can go back to the bottom. I want to go down and clear the screen. But as you can see, that's a simple way of actually looking for file extensions. Now, another cool thing about DFD command, if you hit up arrow and we want to use that same command, but let's say we want to narrow down our searches and we only want to look for files that have main in it. And that'll kind of parse out some of the results. Uh, so you can use these options together. So we have dash E for the extension. Now we want to use a string as well to narrow down our results. So if we type main, which is what we want to look for. So any YAML file that has the word main in it with the extension of YAML on it. So let's press enter and that'll narrow down our results. As you can see, it's it's a shorter list. Let me just say that. But it only brings in files that have main.yaml. YAML. And you can also do that with other things like we just looked at network again. So let's look for all the network YAML files. That even shortened this down a little more. Uh, but there are only a few YAML files that have network in the actual file. But we're looking for those extensions. Now, let's say we know exactly what the file name is, and we want to look for that specific file. And let's say you may have duplicates in other places and you want to verify where the duplicates are located for that exact same file. Or if you're just looking for that file in general, then we can look for a specific file by using dash G, which is an option. So let's go FD dash G. And let's look for a file name called network underscore ping dot yaml and press enter and as you can see it finds that specific file so that's what that g option is for i just kind of wanted to show you guys that um but that is a way to find a specific file that you're looking for now let's clear again and i wanted to show you guys something else with the fd command by default fd doesn't show hidden or ignored files. So whenever we're searching, it, it totally ignores hidden files while searching. So none of that shows up in the results. Now there is an option to bring them back. Uh, and the first thing I wanna do is run the find command against a file that I know is hidden within this direct directory and it's called chat ops. So let's press enter. And within that directory, as you can see, it won't give us any results. And my reason for looking it up like this, just to show you that the find command ignores hidden files and folders. But if we add that dash H in there, let's go down and add that capital H, press enter. That will actually find that hidden directory. So I wanted to show you guys that at least so you guys would know that the find command kind of ignores hidden files and you want to use that dash H if you're searching within a hit, hidden directory. Now let's clear the screen and I want to LS this directory just to show you guys what's in here. Uh, and I'll just run LS without any options. And as you can see, we have a zip file in here and I want to show you something cool that you can do with the FD command. And there is a way to execute other commands after 
FD finds the results. So for instance, the zip command, you can execute unzip after you find all the zip files in there. And if you don't understand how beneficial this is, let's say you have a hundred zip files in here. And they're all mixed up in different locations, different folders. And you want to go through and unzip all those different files and folders. I want to show you guys how to simply do that using the FD command. So we can type FD. And what we want to look for is an extension. That's the best way to actually look for it. But zip as the file extension. And in order to execute something after this, and you want to make sure you have zip and unzip installed, but on most modern ubuntu releases have zip and unzip installed by default so you don't have to worry about it if you have one of the latest versions of ubuntu zip and unzip is included it used to not be included but it is now but all we have to do is type dash x and then unzip and that will go through and unzip each file each zip file that it actually finds and I should have created one, but it'll do one after another. But if it can, if it does have the resources, it will do multiple zip files at a time and unzip them within the location that it finds them. So let's go down and run this so I can show you guys that this actually works. So press enter, boom. As you can see, it inflated all the files, extracted all the files in within that image directory. So let's ls that directory again. So you guys can see that there is now a image folder. And if we ls that directory, you'll see all the files that are in it. So let's look at that image images directory and press enter. And you guys didn't know what was there, but they did have some images within that directory that have been unzipped. So as you can see, this is very powerful because you can run other commands just like we just ran that unzip. For instance, the remove command. I didn't want to show you guys that because I want you guys to be very careful when running the remove command, especially when it comes to deleting files. You want to make sure that you specify the string properly or use the options properly so you don't d accidentally delete something you didn't want to. So as you saw, the FD command is an excellent utility that you can add to your tool belt of commands or utilities. And this is one of the tools that I use on a daily basis while running my Linux operating system. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, just go down and hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. That will be greatly appreciated. And thank you guys for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace.